Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. While draft is not available on Magic Arena yet, I was able to do one draft during the early access event for Theros Beyond Death, so this video is sponsored by Wizards of the Coast and hope you enjoy. Alright, pack one, pick one. Brand new format. And our first rare is a Thassa's Oracle. Reasonable card, but of course you want to be pretty heavy blue to take full advantage. And it's still nothing like exceptional. The alternate win condition is not super relevant for limited. So it's not a super high pick. Looking at the uncommons, Fateful End stands out as a great removal spell. 3 mana for 3 damage and it's a speed. Scry 1 is great. And it also fits into the play a spell in the opponent's turn. Synergy deck that's usually blue-red. Then uh, Metamized Prophecy is a nice potential 2 for 1 as well. Scry 2, choose a name, then play a spell with the chosen name to draw 2. And get some additional information. Definitely a solid card as well. And then looking at the commons. The Chimera is a pretty good one. Potentially pretty cheap 3-3 three, three flyer. Based on your devotion to white. We've got the Nayad, which plays well in the flash deck. And a 3 mana 2 3 is already pretty good stats. There's some other good cards here too. Omen of the Forge. A nice 2 mana burn spell that has all the enchantment synergies that come with it. But I think it would take Fateful End over Omen still. Although it's definitely possible that as the format evolves, we might rate these enchantment synergies even higher. And it might end up being better than Fateful End. But for now I would probably lean towards the Fateful End. A lot of solid cards here. But uh, overall, I think I'm leaning Fateful End as pack one, pick one. Next up, a great uncommon here, Farika Spawn. Probably the best uncommon in black. Four mana for a 3-4 Gorgon. And then escapes for six mana, exiling three other cards from your graveyard. So it's not a very steep cost in terms of how many cards you need to exile. And then it comes into play with two plus one plus one counters and the opponent has to sacrifice a non-Gorgon creature, so that's very good. Then, uh, of course, we also have Renata, which might be the best green uncommon. So this pack is stacked. Four mana for an O3, but the power equal to your devotion to green, which is at least two. And then creatures enter the battlefield with plus one plus one counters on them. So these are potentially two of the best uncommons in the entire set in the same pack. We've got another Omen of the Forge, which of course is quite solid. And some other good cards, but uh, yeah, it's pretty much Renata or Farika Spawn. And they're both amazing, so can't really go wrong with either one. We did first pick a Fateful End, so it's possible that going with the Farika Spawn has a bit more synergy, since Fateful End can end up in their graveyard, so it helps with escape. Renata wants to be a heavy creature deck, and of course Fateful End is not a creature, but of course it's very early in the draft, so it could easily end up uh, being fine with plenty of creatures for Renata. But as a first pick, the Fateful End has a bit more synergy with a Farika spawn for the reasons I mentioned. Or we could just stick to reds and take the Omen of the Forge, and that keeps us more flexible. But both of these cards are very strong, so they're definitely good enough that I would consider taking them, even if it means potentially uh, taking a card from a different color here. Alright, third pick. So red-black, we do have two great individual cards, but red-black is typically a sacrifice synergy deck, so we want some sacrifice fodder, other cards that play well with sacrifice effects. That's kind of the direction we're usually headed in red-black. This pack would have a good green card had we taken Renata. We would be interested in this Haven as a nice 2-mana ramp card that then we can sacrifice to make a 2-2 wolf. The red cards are nothing special. The black cards, I don't mind the funeral rites. Plays qu pretty well with the Farika spawn as a way to draw some cards, fill the graveyard, helps with escape. And... Uh, could potentially lead to a slightly more controlling red-black deck that focuses more on escape instead of the sacrifice synergies. Yeah, I'm kind of down to take the rights here. 
Charger wants to be in a more aggressive deck, so I don't think it's what we want here. Even though it does escape, so it has a bit of synergy there with the Funeral Rites. There's another War Leader, which, you know, could be playable. Definitely better for the more synergistic Sacrifice deck. But then again, there's nothing else here that's amazing for us. I could potentially speculate on a second color if we don't end up red. But there's also no strong incentive. This wants to be in the Instant Speed deck, which blue-black is probably not at its best. Uh, Petitioner wants to be in a heavy green Devotion type deck. Can always take like a Moss Viper, but it's also not super exciting. Yeah, I could still just take the War Leader here. Sites and Training could also be fine as just a 2-mana cantrip in case we do end up green. And if it ends up in the graveyard, it helps with uh, Escape, so it's still just an okay card. I think I'll take the War Leader. Stick to our colors for now. Alright, some pretty good ones here, especially the Piper. I think is going to be a good role player in the Black Sacrifice decks. And Red Black is the Sacrifice deck, plays well with the War Leader and various other Sacrifice effects. There is also Omen of the Dead, which is also quite good to return a creature, and then we can sacrifice it to Scry 2. But I think the Piper is going to be a pretty key card in this deck, and we could use some cheap creatures, so I'll take the Piper for now. Ooh, wow. Celebrant is great, 2 mana 2-1, two, when it dies deals 2 damage to a creature or planeswalker, so can take out a 4 toughness creature by blocking. There's also some other decent cards here. Berserker, a bit better in a more aggressive deck, we seem to be a bit more controlling. Thief is also fine to drop, some other okay red cards here, Manticore, a great trick in a red deck. And then the Rider's okay at 3, but I think Celebrant is perfect here. Nice cheap 2-drop that's still relevant in the late game. We're probably not too interested in the hero of the games, a 3-2 that rewards you for targeting it. We don't seem to be that type of deck. I might just take the rider, but we might not end up playing it. 3-mana 2-3, three two, three, trample, and if we have a 4-powered creature, it gets plus 1 plus 1 until end of turn. Alright, the Rage Hound could be decent if we can support it. Of course, at its best in a more aggressive deck that wants to be beating down, backing it up with combat tricks. But a 3-1 is not easy to block, so if the opponent doesn't have like a 3-4 in play to block it, it's probably going to trade for something. And then we can escape it, and our deck seems pretty well set up to leverage the escape mechanic. So I don't mind it here. And we did wheel Escape Velocity, which I think is also a playable card. One mana enchantment is very cheap, and we can escape just by exiling two other cards, so we can get multiple uses out of it. And haste is of course pretty nice if we can combine it with cards like the Rage Hound, for instance. So I'll give it a shot. Don't know if we'll play the Libation, pretty narrow. Edict effects are usually not great, even though this can get enchantments, which of course is a nice upside, and something black usually doesn't get access to. Not a war leader, in case we need it. So we're pretty committed to black reds. Didn't have a great incentive to move into another color. Ooh. Well, this is a pretty nice rare to open. Ox of Agonos. 5 mana, 4 2, enters the battlefield, discard your hand, and then draw 3. So ideally, you're a low curve deck where you can be empty handed by the time you play this. But it's also good alongside other escape cards, since it provides a lot of fuel for escape if you discard a card or two. And then escapes itself with double red and eight other cards. So it's pretty pricey in terms of how many cards you need to exile, but the cost itself is very cheap, just two red mana. And then escapes with a plus one plus one counter on it too. So that's definitely going to be the pick. Another funeral rites would have been reasonable. And don't have a ton of synergy with the Eidolon at the moment. Arosa's Blessing is also a great removal spell. 4 mana for 4 damage, as long as you can enchant one of your creatures. And Final Flare also plays well with cards like Discordant Piper, that we don't mind sacrificing. But we'll take the Ox. Not all that much, probably just another Piper. As a fine 2-drop, I don't think we want Dreams. Triple Black is pretty 
difficult to cast in this deck, and we're not super interested in the ability here. Don't have any devotion synergies. Uh, Berserker could be fine, but I think we probably prefer the cheaper card for now. All right, some good options here. I think Remorse is quite good, so I wouldn't mind it here. Nice discard spell. A cheap card to go to the graveyard for escape. Another Celebrant would be excellent. Final Death, the great removal spell at common. And then the Oracle is also a great two drop, so an embarrassment of riches here, even Thrill Possibility I would play. So we don't have a ton of removal necessarily. We started out with a couple, but didn't really pick up any additional copies, so I could see the Final Death being the pick, even though all these other cards are amazing too. Yeah, I can buy that. And now we can take another Funeral Rites. This is one of the least playable cards in the entire set. There's not many unplayable cards in the set, if you look at it, but uh, I don't think there's many hyper-aggressive black decks where you would want this. So, yeah, happy with another Rites. And do we want a third Rites? There are diminishing returns once we start losing a bit too much life. But we do have some pretty good early plays with the Pipers, the Celebrants. So we could potentially afford to play three. Otherwise we could take the Lamp Hand, which is also okay. Two mana, one three. Can sacrifice any creature to drain for one. Plays quite well with the Pipers and the Goat Tokens it can generate. I guess we'll take the two drops since we already have two rights. And we might get a third one at some point. Another War Leader. Still don't think we're interested in the Charger, even though... We could be more aggressive if we wanted to. We've got the Rage Hound, which also goes better into a more aggressive shell. So we could still be kind of red-black aggro if we wanted to. We've got this Escape Velocity, which also plays quite well. So instead of being this more mid-rangey control deck, we could be a bit more beatdown. And then the Charger could fit in quite nicely. So it's probably fine. We already have two War Leaders, so I don't really need another one. Perfect. Slaughter Priest of Mogus, the payoff for the Red Black Sacrifice deck, 2 mana 2-2, two, two, and then whenever you sacrifice a permanent, so this also includes random sagas you sacrifice, but for the most part it's going to be creatures, gets plus 2 plus 1 of turn, and then 2 mana to gain first strike if you sacrifice another creature enchantment. And probably don't need a second Escape Velocity... Might just take another Rider here. Alright, Final Flare could be okay with two Discordant Pipers. The Oriand is also okay. But I think I'll go with a Removal Spell. And now I might consider a Berserker at the top end. Especially if we end up more aggressive. Thrill is great. Nothing here. All right, so we seem pretty committed to red-black. Let's put some of this stuff in the sideboard. And we've got a ton of playables. So we could already build a deck after the second pack. So Theros definitely seems very deep on playables. So you're not going to struggle to get a good deck. So it rewards you for finding those great synergies between cards, as you'll have plenty of time to get a playable deck. So it's all about optimizing it and finding those key synergies to make your deck even better. And Timurit calls it that seems great. Kind of like the Black History of Benalia. Mills you, exile a creature enchantment to make a zombie, and then get to scry and drain the opponent based on how many zombies you got. There's also another Final Death, which I wouldn't mind. Inevitable End is also a playable removal spell. But uh, I'll take the Timurat calls the dead here. And what do we have here? Nothing super exciting. Not a big fan of the minion return. The Marauders, just kind of a filler card. Don't have any enchantment synergies in this deck. Could take the Hierophant, which fills the graveyard for escape. And then there's a Cyclops, which 
If you're more aggressive could be okay, but it's a pretty bad blocker since it's unreliable. And we don't have any payoffs for creatures with power 4 or greater, except for, I guess, the Stampede Rider. So those synergize well. So these cards are going to be at their best in probably red-green. But uh, I think I'll take a Harrowfence. Harpy could be fine, just a 3-mana 2-1 flyer that exiles a card. Could take another Hound if we want to be more aggressive. A bit of evasion probably doesn't hurt. Alright, don't mind the Soul Reaper of Mogus, nice Sacrifice Synergy card as well, 3 mana 2 3, 3 mana to sack a creature and draw card. There's also the Voracious Typhon, still in the pack, excellent green card, might be the best green common. And then a great uncommon here too, Eutropia, twice favored. But uh, let's take a Soul Reaper. Great, another Slaughter Priest, can't really pass that up, even though Omen of the Dead would also be serviceable. And love me an Incendiary Oracle, already have two rights, probably don't need a third. And Oracle's a great two-drop, don't know if we'll play the Aspect, maybe. And don't think I'll need another Berserker. Maybe play a second thrill. Don't think we'll need the wings in this deck. So definitely have a lot of playables to choose from here. So even a portent of betrayal could be good with the slaughter priest of Mogus, steal the points creature and then sacrifice it. Alright. So, 53 cards, so we need to make 13 cuts at least. Fruit's an easy one. The Satyr's Cunning could actually be playable just as a way to create sacrifice fodder for the Slaughter Priest. So I'm not quite excluding it right away, even though it's not an exciting card. Don't know if we'll need the Rage Hound. It's definitely one of the weaker 2-drops in this deck, even though it's still potentially good. So yeah, the Charger and the Rage Hounds are maybes, depends how aggressive our deck wants to be. Don't seem to have a great Stampede Rider deck, since we don't have that many 4-powered creatures. So that one can probably go. Funeral Rites is some nice card draw. Don't need to return. Libation's pretty weak. Don't know if we'll need this Aspect of Manticore, so that's also a maybe like the Fateful End and Flare. Spawn is great. Hierophant is a maybe. Marauders, Cuttable, Portents a maybe. And then probably don't need all these 5 drops. So we'll definitely play the Ox and then I might play one of these two or both. 46 cards, if I cut all of these then we pretty much have a deck. The Escape Velocity could also be cuttable. So we've got the Seder's Cunning to make some Sacrifice Fodder. We've got the Piper, which seems quite good, with double Slaughter Priests. Lamp Out of Death's Vigil is also potentially cuttable. Temple Thief, 2 mana 2-2. Two, two. Difficult to block. Celebrant has a 2-1. That can deal 2 more damage. Oracle, a 2-2 two, two that can be pumped. And the Priest which can sacrifice a bunch of stuff. Timurat calls a dead to make some zombies. Do we have any other zombies in the deck? This is a zombie. I think that might be the only one. We've got the Harpy for some evasion. Soul Reaper has a nice uh, card draw engine. And then at the top end we've got the Farika spawn couple Minotaurs, and then the Ox of Agonas. So, I guess these are some of the weaker cards, maybe. The Velocity and the Lampad. Cards I'm potentially considering. Portent of Betrayal could be good, especially 
with Lampad as a one mana way to sack the opponent's creature, and with the two priests. So if we have six mana total, we can steal something and sacrifice for two. And I guess with uh, seven mana, we can steal and sack to the Soul Reaper. Of course, the cheaper the sack effect, the better. Could also potentially play the Hierophant just to kind of fill out the curve at four. Helps fill the graveyard for the escape cards. We've got the Ox, which escapes. Farika spawn. And potentially escape Velocity as well. And I guess the Satyr's Cunning. So we do have a couple escape cards. So filling the graveyard is pretty good. So I don't mind the Hierophant. We could actually run out of cards in this deck since we've got a decent amount of card draw with Thrill and Rites and some self mill with uh, Calls of Dead and the Hierophant. So we could potentially run out of cards in our library. Having a few ways to fill the graveyard is good with the Ox as well, since exiling eight cards is not easy, but if we can get to it, this could potentially be very good. Our deck does have a lot of card draw. The two Thrills, the Funeral Rites, and then the... Uh, Soul Reaper and the Ox as well, so we do get to see a lot of cards, which is nice. We might struggle to close out the game. Slaughter Priest is one of our main win conditions, just because it can ignore most blockers from the opponents, but I guess that's a pretty good way to win the game. In terms of removal, we have Fateful End, Flare, Final Death, as well as the Farika Spawn that we can return. So yeah, I could just cut both of these and submit this, but I'm definitely looking at this Portent of Betrayal as an option. This is best of three, so we do get to potentially sideboard into some of these cards, if we think they'll be good. We have a good amount of creatures, 14, and then the Cunning and the Calls of the Dead are essentially creatures as well, even though they don't count as creatures in the stats. And then Thrill can ensure we don't flood out in the late game, so that makes playing 17 lands more reasonable. And then the Mana Distribution, Bit more blank than red, so 9-8 is probably okay. Alright, let's give this a shot. Definitely like being on the play with this deck. And yeah, looks good. Don't know which 2-drop we want to lead with here, got a lot of options. Uh, let's go with the Piper. Alright, well, ideally we can trade off for the Celebrants before playing more creatures out, but that's probably not happening. But I think I still want to attack. And then probably just play my own Celebrant for now. Alright, Triumph. Pumps the Celebrant, attacks, don't want to block here, otherwise we lose both creatures. Bit stuck on lands now. The fourth chapter is potentially going to be pretty bad for us as they get to fight and then uh, potentially kill multiple creatures with the Celebrants. Triton, also an excellent uncommon. And escape velocity to give it haste. Do we want to keep racing? Taking 7 this turn, next turn Celebrant can hit for 5. It's a lot of damage. So I don't know if we want to keep racing. Especially when we have some Decent late game cards in hand with the funeral rites and the final death. So maybe we just trade off. But then the question is, what do we trade off? I could block their celebrant. And then they probably kill my piper. Because if they kill my celebrant, I kill their triton as well. So piper down. Still nothing. Let's 
So we don't get max value out of our celebrants since they don't have a creature that we can kill. But I probably still block here. So let's get something in play. I guess I could Harpy to exile the Velocity, which could be pretty scary. Seems fine. So they didn't get any value from the last chapter, at least. Alright. Pretty good against one toughness creatures. And are they gonna escape to kill the token? Alright, that's fine. Four mana. So I can play this, or I can funeral rites. Probably play the reaper still. Alright, go it down. Still have five cars in graveyard, so they definitely have a decent amount left over. And this seems like a good turn for Berserker. Alright, so we're on the board opponent with a bunch of cards in hand, but their last couple turns haven't been too impressive. So maybe they're flooding out a bit. I see minions return on my creature and then now they're gonna try and kill it to steal it. Presumably. Alright. Well, that's not going to work, since it exiles, so they don't get it back. If I sacrifice it, they would get it back, but I think I'm just going to let this happen. Don't know if it matters what we exile here. And then I can keep up 3 mana for the Soul Reaper, or I can escape again. Probably keep up 3. I guess I can also write, so maybe I should have started there. But I also want to put some pressure on them. And if they want to escape this, then I want to have the mana to sack the token. So I think I'll pass. Now it's probably fine to write. And then I guess we'll play this. And yeah, our graveyard is nice and full for this Ox of Agonos. And the spawn as well, so randomly milled them, but now we have access to them. Aspect of Lamprey, that's fine. So I should have enough mana to final death and escape the Ox next turn. Let's see, do I have any one drops in red or black? I think Cunning is the only one. So it probably doesn't matter here how I tap my mana. Could also escape the spawn, to be honest, and they would have to sack the thief. 
might just be better for now. Either way, we're probably in good shape. 15 cards left, so we're not close to decking. And then just exile some stuff. Alright, got to see that animation as well. Alright, GG's. So, didn't look great at the start. We were stuck on two, but I guess my opponent flooded out a bit. Their minions return didn't really accomplish what they wanted to. So how do we want to sideboard? Don't think we need to change much. Don't want too many of these aggressive uh, creatures since the opponent is definitely capable of some explosive starts. Maybe I want to cut some of the one toughness creatures, which lined up uh, poorly against their enchantments. But, I mean, I'm probably still going to keep Celebrant, and uh, Piper has plenty of synergy in my deck. So it's kind of tricky to cut those. So I think we just stay put. Alright, hand seems great. Alright, they do have the Rage Hound. I could Thrill here, just hit my land drop, and then if they play an extra creature, the Celebrant can still trade off for both of them. Since this is forced to attack, so I maybe don't want to show them the Celebrant yet. So let's try that. And then what do I discard? I can discard the Ox and maybe escape it later, since we've got the Call of the Dead to fill the graveyard, so we'll be able to escape this pretty easily. Alright, that didn't quite pan out like we planned. Yeah, I think I ditched Ox. But now I could also just play Calls of Dead here. And then get rid of the war leader, I guess. So three cards in graveyard. This exiles three cards to escape for four mana. So it will definitely be a problem going long, but we do have the harpy to potentially exile one of the escape cards. Triumph. Don't think it really matters what we exile. Can go a double two drop here. Opponent may be escaping here. They might have the Maximize Velocity card here. Yep. Escape Velocity. I mean, probably just block with the Zombie. I don't get the benefit from the Scry and the Life Gain, but keeping this for later if they play another creature could be better. I guess on the flip side, if they play that uh, Enchantment to give one, minus one Toughness, this is a bit more vulnerable. So maybe I do trade here anyway and keep the Zombie. Uh, do I want to land? I guess it's not bad. 
since I kind of want to empty my hand to eventually play the Ox, and drawing a lands helps with that to an extent. And uh, yeah, sacrificing Sagas also counts for the Slaughter Priest, so great synergy there. Alright, looks like they didn't have a great draw here. Let's keep it up. Looks okay, we've got the early two drops we can play and then the rights to refuel. Probably gonna lead with a Piper. Blue Reds Chimera, alright. It's a pretty good draw. Piper also counts as a zombie for this enchantment. And our deck has plenty of creatures, so we should be able to make zombies pretty reliably. And Cyclops. And yeah, it's not going to be able to block here. Ooh. Exiling the Farika spawn feels kind of bad, but I think we still do it. And then we get to have a pretty efficient turn. So yeah, this can block. Hit for 4 damage, and then Priest plus Thief. And once again we're gonna have the synergy between sacrificing a Saga and the Slaughter Priest. And even have 3 zombies in play. Cyclops attacks because it can block. Take it. Thrill, do we need it? Not really. I might put the mountain on top. And then we can draw it with the funeral rites, play celebrant. Also, do I need double red? Maybe not. Just bottom everything. And then I could also play this and sack it to the Priest to kill the Chimera. But maybe I want to finish off the Nyad if they block one of my two-powered creatures. So either way, I guess I play this first. That way I can maybe get into additional damage if I sack to the Priest. They could potentially have a 1 mana Bounce Spell, or even a 2 mana one thanks to the Nyad. I guess I sacrifice. That way I get into more damage. And hope they don't have any interaction here. Alright, they did have Mantle, so that's very good here, but still look to be in decent shape. They're still taking 12 here. And they have a pretty hard time blocking the Temple Thief. 
Lionfish can maybe tap it down if they have an instance. And alright, intervention to kill it. Just need to draw a removal spell here essentially. Harpy's good too. So I can still attack with the Slaughter Priests and sacrifice. I mean, my opponent is going to block. They could double or triple block, and then what happens? I can kill multiple creatures, or I can just trade for the Chimera and play Harpy, and then the Harpy can maybe finish them off. I think I send everyone... Alright, Fateful Ends, that's a good one. I think I chump now while I can. Although I might need the goats so they're unable to block my Harpy since this does have reach. But if I take 7 now then next turn both creatures are lethal. Yeah, I'll chump. Berserker is not bad, but War Leader matches up a bit better here. Maybe use the ability alongside the Berserker. Can play Berserker, make this indestructible, and give it menace. Alright, so if I still had the Goat token, if I attacked with both, then this wouldn't have been able to block. But I guess it didn't matter too much. Could play the ox, but then I can't play anything else. So this seems like a good berserker turn. And then force them to chomp. If I give it menace, it doesn't really matter since I can just block with Cyclops and Nyad. Yeah, if I play Harpy, I could have lethal next turn, but forcing them to chomp seems kind of nice. And not losing the war leader, and now we still have two lethal threats next turn. So this seems a little bit safer to me. Although I guess if they have removal for Berserker I still die. Whereas if I give this menace by sacking the Berserker... Then I could kill the Cyclops and I would only take 6 on the way back, but if they target this... I guess we still die. So we're still very much... in danger here. But if we get to untap next turn, we should be in great shape. If they're blocking with the Cyclops, then we're in less danger, I guess. Manticore, sure. And a Piper, which I can easily sack to the War Leader as well. So let's see what's happening. Can play the Piper, sack it to the War Leader, and then I guess it would double block the War Leader, and I would be able to, I guess, trade if I sack the Goat as well. And then it would trade for Manticore, so I would trade off the entire board essentially. And then C7. I also have enough mana to play Harpy, and then Harpy's lethal next turn. I guess that works. And then we still have the Ox to refuel. So forcing them to trade off seems good for me. Assuming they don't have any tricks. Uh, 
And then I have no idea what we should exile. Alright, we're looking good. Thrill can cycle a land, and we've got a removal spell in hand too. Oh, I guess that's true, yeah, my opponent was a 2, so Fateful End to the face. Could have also won us the game there. Alright, that was a close game. We had a great start. That uh, Hexproof trick definitely got them back into the game. And then we were able to grind it out with Ox. Don't think we change much. I think I'm still pretty happy with our configuration overall. Could consider the aspect of Manticore since they seem to be the ones kind of sitting back, but they also showed us two copies of uh, Fateful End, which is very good against Manticore as a, an instant speed removal spell. So I don't want to have too many tricks like that. The Rage Hound could be okay, since they seem to be a bit more defensive than we are, and it can attack into most of their creatures. But they also showed us that Manticore that deals one damage which could be very good against it. And it also gets blocked by the 4-4 potentially. Yeah, probably stay put and get a bit more info for game 3. Possible that we want to be more aggressive, especially on the play if we lose the next one. And then in game 3, if we're on the play, we can potentially have a more aggressive start where we play the Rage Hound and maybe even the Charger. I mean, this sounds great if we draw a red mana. And we're on the draw, and we get to play Piper anyways. It's definitely risky. If we don't get there soon. But I think this has enough upside that I'm willing to keep. Alright, they have their own Rage Hound. A little bit surprising, but... Maybe because they're on the play, they want to be a bit more aggressive. Just play the Piper. <laughs> they're missing blue. I think I'm just gonna kill this Manticore before it shoots my goats. Do I want a Harpy? Yeah, it seems okay. Can get rid of the Rage Hounds. So they're still missing blue. And then we can double two drop or play the Hierophant. Double two drop seems okay. Especially when they might have their own Fateful Ends to kill my Hierophant. So I expect a priest to die here. Alright, Omen. Haven't seen that one before. There's blue. So they might just want to trade for the Celebrant while they don't have more creatures in play. I've got a couple of options. Kind of like just playing Hierophant here, I think. It's possible that trading Celebrant for Lionfish is still fine, even though we don't get max value out of it. But it feels like we can set up a better play here. A 
Vaxin Goal, tap down Hierophant, sure. But now the Celebrant is happy to attack. And then we've got a Thrill in case we draw another land. So we're slightly ahead, but not by much. Yeah, I think I'll take it. Because if we trade, then the Celebrant gets a little worse. Keep the Harpy back for now. Could be fine to attack still. Sure. Now they probably have the Hexproof trick in hand then, if they're making this block. So do I want to put... Do I want them to put the plus one plus one on the Chimera or the Gull? Probably the Chimera, that way if we do draw removal later, we can just kill the Chimera, which is the better of the two creatures. Yep. Ooh, that's brutal. All right, now we're behind. Second hit for four. I mean, probably still play War Leader over Timurits. And that might force them to stay back. Just a Chimera. And a Trickster on defense. Alright. So we should be okay now. So I can attack with the War Leader. Sacking the Goats. They have to double block the War Leader. Get in for four, put them to three, and trade off. I guess I need to sack something else as well. So I can play the Timurit first. And then sack the zombie we make. Ooh, Ox of Agonas could also get that back now. Can also sack enchantments. I guess I should have tapped my mana differently. And kept up more reds. Because yeah, now I guess they could just block Piper, block Harpy. And then they're not dead. Sure. Because I could have attacked with all if I had double red up. But maybe the Slaughter Priests messed things up a little bit. Yeah, we essentially missed out on 4 damage. Alright, that should seal the deal. Maybe I should have upkeep cast this. Yeah, it was probably better. 
They might have the burn spell in hand, and I might have given them the chance to draw into another counter spell or mantle. This seems pretty safe now. Alright, so... Can I kill them here? Probably not. So we'll just play some stuff out. Could have also tapped differently so we could play the Ox. If we tap double black for the Thief. But they seem pretty dead anyway. Alright, sweet. Yeah, definitely have to be careful with auto tapper, especially when it comes to escape, since it might not always take those into account. That looks good. Alright, that's a good one. So now it makes sense to play the Harrowfan, so next turn we can go 2 plus 3. Thoughts on removing lands after sideboards, burn on the draw. Yeah, that's definitely something I probably should do more often. So it probably takes my other priests. So now I've got an interesting decision. I can thrill and if I thrill into another land still play Harpy. And we've got plenty of two drops as well that I could find so I think it's worth it. And then probably get rid of the enchantment, which they might be able to return more easily. Ooh, hello, Ox. So this turn we can... Get in with the Hierophants and Harpy. And a 5-4 is a pretty big body, so... Yeah, Berserker is a nice curve topper here for this aggressive deck. And then if we draw land especially... Being able to play Ox and draw 3 is great. That's also pretty good. And I might end up playing the Ox anyway. Or I could kill Harpy and attack. I mean, if they attempt to double block my Berserker, I would be pretty happy. So that's a reason to maybe wait. Eh, I probably should not have attacked with the Goat there, but that's fine. Alright, so they do make the trade. Sure. Another omen. Yeah, that's fine. So they get to loot with the Kraken. 
So it's tricky here, do we play the Ox and give up on the Fateful Ends, but we do get to draw three? Or do we keep this as a removal spell or maybe a burn spell? Playing the Ox is probably still the play. Three merchants for two and a Mogus's favor. Sure. So they're forced to block and trade uh, for the Berserker. And then I take four and I get to add some more stuff to the board. I am giving them more information here, but it's probably still worth it to make sure they're dead. Keep this in hand in case we draw another thrill, maybe. Alright. So blue-black, somewhat controlling. How do we want to sideboard? This could be a matchup where we want Charger and Ragehound, but we're also on the draw now, so those get a bit worse. Farika's Libation, not great against the Blue Omen in terms of enchantments, could be effective against creatures if they just have the one blocker out, but still kind of medium. Don't really have any great cards to bring in, I don't think. Bit of a slow hand. And the flare doesn't have any good sacrifice fodder, but we'll probably still keep. This hand would love to draw the piper. Opponent may be missing blue mana. Eh, probably don't want to play the Ox quite yet. I could final flare sacking this thief. Put a scan a medium. This also doesn't really attack even with a bonus. So I don't really have a great play here, sadly. But I do want to empty my hand for Ox, so maybe it's still fine to get rid of it. And then next turn we can maybe double up. Aha. Uh -huh. They forgot to read the card. Charger seems a little strange, since they seem to have a more defensive deck, but uh, we'll see here. So this can attack. Probably just... Funeral Rites and Priests. Alright, 
pretty happy with another 2-drop. Yeah, does take out our 2-3. So I wouldn't mind a land so I can double spell. I guess that still works. Now I don't think I want lands. Also probably should have played Harafant first anyway since the Scry would have gotten messed up by the mill. Also, now I got to dig deeper for a good escape card. So in that sense, it kind of helped. All right. Ton of options here. Probably just escape this. Also, it's not like killing the charger does much for me. Plenty of cards in graveyard. Yeah, the escape cost on the Farika spawn is super cheap. the goats. So they seem pretty dead. If I play a celebrant I can still use priest twice. All right, sweet. And we've got a pretty good opener. Horn beetles, a nice to drop can potentially grow over time. There's a little bit too much that can go wrong if we block here. So I'll just take two even though, in theory, I would be okay trading for the beetle. Nice, so we're a bit behind here. We're used to being the beatdown deck, and now we're kind of on the back foot. Probably so far behind that I... pretty much forced to block here, I think. I mean, next turn I could play the Soul Reaper to try and block. But if they do have a four-powered creature, then it's no longer gonna work. We'll try. Alright, that wasn't so bad. Maybe they have a counterspell up. Cunning plus final flare is a pretty good combo here. Get to sack our token to kill a larger creature, potentially. But I could also just play the Soul Reaper for now. But if we want to play around a counterspell, then going for the flare plays out a little bit better. As we potentially make them waste their mana. Soul pass. Uh, it was an omen of the hunt. So 
So the game plan is to just trade off some resources and eventually replenish with uh, Ox of Agonas. There is a third caller. So all the colors represented in this match. Ooh, Typhon. Definitely pretty happy to exile that one with final death. As they wouldn't be able to escape. It is pretty nice to go Soul Reaper plus Priest, but I think I'm just not going to take any risks and get rid of it now while we can. Alright, Splashing White for Siona. Does not find an aura. Alright, so... Get to play our smaller stuff out. I'm okay if these just end up trading. And hopefully we get to play the Ox soon. Ooh, Nylea. Yeah, it's pretty strong. Devotion to green is one, two, three, four. So it's almost a creature. And I did just use my final death, which would have been a good answer for it. Damage. Sadly didn't pick up another play we can make for now. But next turn we should be able to escape the spawn. Finds an altar. Goes to the graveyard. So looks like we're in the clear. At least for this turn. Of course, gotta watch out for potential instant speeds. Devotion turning on Nylea. Insight instead. Alright. Of course, unlike Cure's Obsession, this one doesn't fall off end of turn. And the 1 1 token is good fodder for the Farika spawn. So I could play Berserker on the Ox attack with it, as well as the Priests. Alright, so that maybe sets up uh, Farika spawn for next turn. Nylea is a creature and there's a 1-1 one -one chumper now. Need to try and get rid of that token before we get the spawn back, but there's no easy way to do that. I could sack the Ox and then escape it to maybe draw some cards. Or draw cards with the Soul Reaper, I guess, that also works. Just a land. Alright. I mean, I could still attack with Berserker, Priest, and Ox, and then maybe that's still fine, because if they do block, then they lose out on the Devotion.
So we're gonna see a Scry and then a Nylea activation. But now Nylea is pretty far from... Is it four mana to activate? Three. I guess they put a non-creature card on top. But yeah, now Nylea is pretty far from being active. I have enough mana to sacrifice Farika spawn and escape it once again. That could be a play. Never mind. Blessing's quite good here. Takes out a priest, and there's another 1 1 token. Alright. How many cards in graveyard? Eight. So I need one more card in graveyard to escape the ox. So just a chump. But now I can sack Farika spawn. And get it back to get rid of Siona, which seems good. but we're finally starting to pull ahead. Shadow Spear, all right, that's definitely a scary card too. But Nylea hasn't been too productive here. Lots of enchantments, but luckily got rid of the key creature. All right, we got there. So Bant, Auras deck. Featuring Nylea. So once basically all the removal we can get. But that's already the case. Portent of Betrayal might be necessary here to steal a creature and sacrifice it. So I think that's coming in. And Aspect of Manticore could be okay too since there, there doesn't seem to be much interaction on the other side. So having a combat trick like this could be serviceable. Don't like this if they can make a bunch of tokens. So let's bring those in. Cunning is cuttable. Temple Thief is cuttable. Try something like this. Yeah, maybe Temple Thief was uh, still supposed to be in the main deck since it is good against Auras as it's both enchanted creatures and enchantment creatures. But this feels like a matchup where I just want to make sure I can find some interaction. And the early pressure isn't as important. So it could be the omen that we saw in the first game. Hopefully mill over some creatures or enchantments. And there's omen. Getting white mana. And we do get a creature. So I've got a nice start. Not sure how good this portent is gonna end up being. It looks like Siona still misses, all right. But a Satassin training to make a first token. So still can attack, and we'll play the priests, which will also get pumped by the saga next turn, which is kind of nice.
do I want another funeral rites? Probably you just want to look for removal, and we already have one in hand, so it's kind of slow to play both, maybe. It's close, I could see keeping it too. Could have also kept a lance so we could portent plus use a priest. Although there's a chance that uh, Siona will die here anyway. Because I would be happy to use final death on it. We'll attack first. If we try and final death and they have the hexproof aura, then we're gonna get punished, but they only have one card in hand. Alright, so it looks like we're pretty safe to go for it. Top top. No blocks. I'm just gonna do this now. Just in case there is some sort of uh, hexproof aura in our future. And that'll do it. Mulligan to 5 was pretty rough there in the second game, but the first game was pretty interesting, lots of back and forth. Alright, so far so good. Time for the final boss. Hmm, this one's a little sketchy, but we do have a good start of cunning into priests. Just don't have a ton of follow-up. We're on the play, so mulliganing is kind of painful too. And we do have to thrill possibility to potentially discard lands. I'll try it. The red black mirror. The Hierophant will also fuel the Satyr's Cunning. Maybe mill over some other escape cards. So yeah, in this first draft I've been very impressed by the escape mechanic in general. Just how good those cards are. Even some of the weaker escape cards on the surface are actually quite good. Don't really want to be forced to activate the Slaughter Priest here. I guess the Seder can attack. Alright, Funeral Rites, pretty good here. Might want to keep up a red mana in case we need to escape the ox, but I guess we won't have enough mana for that anyway, but might as well. And yeah, there's ox, but only seven cards in graveyard at the moment, and we can thrill here. So do I attack with the priests? They can, of course, also sack something. Don't think we do. So we could block Rage Hound and then sack the Seder to a first rank on our Slaughter Priest, or we can just cast a Thrill and take three. Ooh, nice. This also sacrifices enchantments, so perfect combo here. So if I'm going to block the Rage Hound and sack the Seder, then they're just going to sack the Rage Hound to get in for 4. So we're not really getting max value necessarily. But taking 5 is also a lot of damage. Given that we have the Harpy and I can exile the Rage Hound next turn, maybe it is fine to make them do it. Could also just block Priest on Priest. And what happens then? Then they just sack the Blessing. And we trade Priest and I sack the Seder. It's not great. Probably do this. This 
so the Rage Hound's gone. Let's take four. And then now I can Harpy the Rage Hound, get in with the Hierophant, and still cast my Thrill. And discard the Swamp here. Final Flare can also sack enchantments. That happens. Yeah, we're definitely behind in this game. Nightmare. Ouch. Kills the Harpy. So we better not be stuck with a non-creature spell in hand at the end of this. So I guess I can Cunning and then Flare, killing the Slaughter Priests. Trading 3 damage for 2 damage might not be even worth it here. I guess I'll just do it now since I'm gonna have to anyway. But then next turn we'll have to play the Ox before it's gone. Did not see this guy in the draft. That's definitely also a solid addition for this type of deck. Let's see. Seven, eight. Hmm. So I guess I'll play Berserker and an Ox discarding Soul Reaper. Doesn't matter here, our graveyard's gonna get exiled. Nah, not the most exciting hand. And we get to attack here. I guess so. We've got two blockers back. So if their hand is nothing, we maybe have a chance, but if they have something else good, we're probably going to be too far behind. Given how this game started with our 5 lander, we still put up a fight. I mean, my opponent's almost dead here. They're at 9, so if we draw one of our two burn spells, they might be dead. So now we don't kill them, but I guess we're not dead. Alright, still not dead. That's a lot of fodder. Alright, I guess I'm just gonna mill myself at this rate. I guess we're just dead, but maybe they don't make the attack. Because I do still have two cards on hand here.
Alright, GG's. So taking another look here. So pretty aggressive. Lots of Grim Physicians, so one toughness creatures on my end are pretty bad. I mean Celebrant is still okay since it kills stuff when it dies. Satyr's Cunning is maybe pretty bad. Piper's not amazing, but it's still good in the matchup overall, providing some sacrifice fodder. So probably take out the 1-1, one, one, and then don't hate the Lampad as a 1-3 blocker, lines up well against all the 2-1s and 1-1s. One, yeah, Aspect of Manticore could also be reasonable. Didn't see a ton of instant speed interaction. And I guess Harpy is pretty bad with all their... Grim Physicians. So we'll maybe try this. Not a great hand, but probably got to keep. At least now we've got some fodder for the final flare. I guess if they block and I pump, I'm okay with that exchange. Ox in the graveyard. And now I probably want to kill the priests. Although if I were to attack with Oracle, would they block with Piper? Maybe. But then it would exile, so they wouldn't get the goats. Maybe I should have kept it back anyway, just to hold off the Piper and then this turn flare the Priests and then next turn Hierophant would be a good blocker. Could still play the Hierophant of course. And then they just hit me with the Priests. Definitely want to try and kill the opponent's uh, priest while they're tapped out so they don't get the soul reaper value. So that was kind of reason to final flare last turn. Uh, they've got their own flare. Kills my goats. Take six. Yeah, the attack with the oracle was probably not necessary. And now I don't have fodder for the flare. So they have a 4-2 Priest, but without First Strike. 
So I could block it with Oracle, and then if they give it first strike, I could Manticore. If they just attack with the Soul Reaper, I could double block. Or block and use Priests. That's too bad. But uh, I guess I can Manticore the one they target. Or I can use Final Flare to sack the Priests, killing their Priests. I mean, Manticore is kind of the cleaner answer here. They don't get to attack. And I'm not going to really get to ambush them with the Manticore anyway if they see my hands. So this turn I could Thrill and then Flare. I have 8 cards in Graveyard, so I can almost cast Ox before the third chapter. So that could be the plan. Thrill, discard War Leader, play the Flare, sacking Oracle. Spawn is good too. So probably still do this. And then I'm okay just trading for the Soul Reaper. Alright, I can also sacrifice the aspect, I totally forgot. Yeah, that was a mistake. Yeah, we could have sacked the Manticore instead of the creature. Would have been so much better. So I guess what I do is play spawn and an ox. And this doesn't matter. And then this fills my graveyard for escape. Although the spawn's not great against the Piper. Don't have many cards left at this rate. At least we're doing a good job of filling the graveyard again for escape. Yeah, it's gonna be tough to cast Ox another time here. They've got their own spawn. So we have five cards in graveyard. No good attacks. And we both have Soul Reaper plus Spawn. Spawn is non-Gorgon, so they can make me sack my spawn, but there's plenty of other creatures in play.
This only sacrifices uh, creatures, so I can't sack the Saga before it uh, goes away. Celebrant. I mean, I guess it's fine. Can sack it to the Soul Reaper and then kill the Physician. But then they get to sack it to their Soul Reaper as well. So it's not great actually. Although at this point I'm not sure what we have left to win the game. Yeah, we're just gonna deck first. And I don't think we're gonna get to 16 damage in time. No, the bottom two cards. Yeah, I think this is uh, game over. Oh well, GG's. Definitely made a game out of it. Don't think I can keep this on the play. If we don't draw Swamp within our first two draw steps, it's uh, pretty bad. This is better. Alright, so what do we want to do about this Rage Hounds? Probably just block it with the Piper. Play Thief. Or a good Funeral Rite, and then that sets up the Farika spawn for next turn. Maybe that's better. They could have an Aspect of Manticore, but then... We could always uh, Fateful End next turn as well. A 4-4 blocker is definitely somewhat problematic. So we can Fateful and the Herald, I guess. Should have maybe put a stop on upkeep. So I could Fateful and kill this and then potentially improve my draw step. So if I draw land, I can still play something else. Yeah, let's just do this now. Final death. I mean, I kind of want it. I guess I can go Thief plus Thrill next turn, discarding something. First I ruin games. Well, we kind of want to line this up so we can kill their four power creature, but it looks like they're going to have two of them. So I guess we can thrill first, discarding one of our fives, probably the war leader here. So we can final death one of their creatures, but they have no lack of four power creatures here, so yeah, definitely in a lot of trouble. They all trample, so there's no chum blocking allowed. And yeah, our deck doesn't play great from behind. I guess we can spawn. And try and grind them out that way. Yeah, 
Yeah, they've got all the synergy cards for power 4 or greater. Finds a land. So when next one happens, they get a gold token. That one's not too bad. So the spawn is doing a good job on defense at least, but uh, the rise means they'll eventually draw too much. Also pretty close to just playing the ox, thanks to the mill. And I'm kind of hoping they double block so we can final death, but that's probably not happening. So we have seven cards in Graveyard, including the Ox. Their creatures with Trample, so that's definitely scary here. If they find a Pump Spell. But we're not that on board. Well, if their entire turn is activating Grove Dancer, that's not too bad. Finds Karyatids. Can also sack something to enable the Ox potentially. Although I do want to get this final death out of my hand first. So where does that leave me? Maybe I should have sacked the Goats, but of course it doesn't fill the graveyard for Ox. And if I exile the Forerunner, they lose Trample. Although I guess this one has Trample automatically. I'll try this. And then the plan is to final death the Forerunner, so the Warden can't attack. I guess I might as well do it now. Or maybe not. And then sag the token, which can chum block potentially. Or I could do this now. Since, yeah, this won't be able to attack unless they find another creature, and this has Trample anyway, so it's not like Chomping does much there. So I guess I might as well sag the token now. Hmm, it's a little risky to play this. I think I'll keep a final death. And the plan is to exile the Forerunner. Don't think there's any instant speed hexproof in green that we need to play around. I could sacrifice the Farika spawn to the Soul Reaper and keep getting it back instead of going for the Ox. But they do have a 2-2 they can sack to the first uh, escape here, so... It's not super enticing. And a 5-6 is doing a good, good job of beating down. So they escape Chimera, which is also enabling the Warden. So I can't prevent them from attacking with Warden. So now what? Probably just take four. And then the plan is probably still... let's see. They have two cards in Graveyard, but they can add more with the Grove Dancer potentially. So the question here is, do we exile the Forerunner or the Chimera? Probably still the Forerunner, since it provides Trample to the Chimera. Finds another Hound. Thrill. A little awkward here with Ox, but I guess... Let's see. Yeah, if I Thrill, I can put this in the graveyard and then escape Ox as well. So that works. Question is, do we do anything first? I'll probably start there since I might pick up something I want to play. If 
Funeral rites. Hmm. Interesting twist. So I could wait a turn on the Ox and just go Priest and Rites for now. What I could have also done instead of Thrill was sacking the Thief and then playing the Oracle and then just playing the Ox. Maybe that was better. Alright, so what do we attack with? This attacks... This is fine, since they can block with the Grove Dancer. That way I still threaten lethal, so they have to block something. Yeah, I don't know if I can afford to ride here at 6 life. So I might just have to ox. And that's gonna discard my hand, but so be it. At least by discarding my hand, it means that it's going to be easier to escape next time. It's not bad. An extra blocker. And then next turn we can do the sack spawn plus escape it potentially as well. Intervention, searching up six lands, all right. So they will have mostly action left. And then do we sack the Piper. Opponent's got four blockers. I can put them to one. If I draw my burn spell, I can kill them. So I don't think I sack it. So what happens if I attack with everyone? So we'll sacrifice... Spawn. So we can get it back. And then... Should be okay. Alright, points at one. Their hand is mostly lands, but uh, they do have a couple escape cards. Next born Colossus as well. All right, let's get in there. All right, that was a close game. Yeah, Farika spawn was definitely great in this game. So red green power four matters. Seems like a matchup for Portent of Betrayal, potentially. Aspect seems okay. So like those two. Satyr's Cunning is not great. So I can probably shave that one. Harpy is okay, since I didn't seem to have many reach or flying creatures. But if we're on the defensive, it's not very good. But they did also have a lot of escape, so it's good there. So probably still want to keep the Harpy. The 5-4 maybe lines up awkwardly, whereas the 4-5 is a good blocker. So I could shave the Berserker, maybe. 
Could also cut a land on the draw. Maybe that's better. And just play the extra 5 drop. Still have plenty of card draw with a double thrill and the 3 mana draw too. Sure. No cheap creature, but I've got uh, some card draw with the thrill and then fateful ends for some cheap interaction. Also, we don't feel too bad about discarding the ox in the early game, since we can usually get it back later. So I might actually discard the Ox here. Since I have Funeral Rites in hand, so I'm not going to empty my hand anytime soon. And then do they just Fateful End now? Probably. Haven't seen many better targets. And I'll keep a land. Don't have any one mana plays left in the deck. Alright, next turn Piper plus Finale. Looks good. This is gonna hurt. Take six. So I think Piper plus final flare. Question is... The timing on this flare could also potentially go for aspects. Probably just pass for now. Alright, so now probably want to flare. And I'm probably chomping. Not bad. Probably just want a final death to Hunt Master. Mitigate the damage and then next turn the Berserker is maybe a good blocker. If don't get to efficiently double spell, I guess I can like Timurat plus Thrill, but Timurat's not a very good blocker here. So now we're probably looking at this uh, Berserker. Although they can easily have a bunch of removal in hand since we haven't presented many creatures so far. Don't really want Ox with a full grip. Return to nature, exiling the ox. Alright, fair enough. So now we're in decent shape. Can even consider attacking with the Berserker since we can Aspect of Manticore on defense. The only issue there is that we're the ones that have to play the Aspect first, so we could get punished by some interaction from the opponent there. 
So I'm probably just gonna stay back with the Berserker for now. And then next turn we can get more aggressive. Omen kills priests, it's too bad. Otherwise, next turn we could have stolen a creature and sacrificed it to the priest. Opponent gets this cry too. Keeps one card on top. Ooh, binding. Alright, so next turn that's gonna... Exile up to two cards. Although right now I get the spawn back. On the third chapter they get to return a creature or land card. Alright, I mean for now spawn seems great. So I guess I want to exile some creatures here. And this act of treason should be able to go the distance. So let's see, points at 15, 10, so this should do it. Alright, sweet, so lost a match to the other red-black sacrifice deck, but overall the synergies were pretty strong. Definitely saw the power of some of our escape cards, in particular the Farika spawn. Removal, while good, doesn't necessarily do as much when creatures keep coming back from the graveyard. Alright, that's gonna be it for me today. I wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.